Okay, it looks like everyone has made it switched over from the closed session. Mayor, are you ready to begin the study session? Yes, yes, I am. Okay, you are on. Okay, uh, let's call to order the special council meeting study session of June 9th. Before we get started, I'd like to remind council of some procedural items for this evening. During the meeting, council members and participants will remain muted when not speaking. If council members or participants have a question or comment, please use the raised hand feature. Speakers will be called upon one at a time. This council meeting is being conducted utilizing teleconferencing and electronic means consistent with the State of California Executive Order N-29-20 regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. Mayors of the members of the public uh, may provide audio public comment by connecting to the teleconference meeting online or by telephone. Use the raised hand feature to request to speak, star nine on your telephone. Teleconference meetings Details are available on the council agenda. Comments on the study session must be submitted prior to the time the mayor closes public comment on this item. City Clerk, may we please have the roll call? Mayor Klein? Present. Vice Mayor Smith? Present. Council Member Larson? Present. Council Member Hendricks? Attending. Council Member Melton? Present. Council Member Goldman? Councilmember Goldman, you may be muted. Present, sorry. Thank you, and Councilmember Fong. Present. Seven present participating via teleconference. Thank you very much. And as far as public comment, note that council will hear the public comment item three after agenda item study session number four. So with that, let us go to 2020-0400, Lawrence Station Area Plan Housing study boundary expansion since a place plan update. Is there a staff report? Yes, uh, good evening, uh, honorable mayor, members of the city council. My name is George Schroeder. I'm gonna be walking you through the uh, Lawrence Station area plan update tonight. And I have a presentation here. It'll be about uh, 20 minutes or so. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So here's the agenda that uh, I'll be going through just to give you a, a up, update on the background of the study and looking at the main components of the, the, the study, the boundary expansion uh, and also the housing study. And then uh, we also did a market study and fiscal analysis to see uh, what the effects of adding this additional housing in the area would be. Um, and then uh, just go over the development incentive program. This is the program we have to get from a minimum to a maximum uh, density with, with bonuses, uh, with incentives. And also to update you on um, where staff is going with uh, creating the new sense of place plan for the area and then the next steps moving forward. So, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, the council uh, adopted the, the plan back in 2016. And at that time, uh, the, the council uh, uh, adopted uh, up to 2,300 units to be uh, built in that area. And uh, really the intent was to transform this area from a industrial area to more of a mixed use neighborhood and really take advantage of the, uh, the Caltrain station, the Lawrence Caltrain station that's there and increase ridership. Uh, so along with additional residential, the council approved uh, 1.2 million square feet of office and R&D space to be built throughout the area. And at the time of the adoption, the council directed staff to prepare a sense of place plan. This would be similar to other sense of place plans that we have in the city where you have a, a neighborhood that's uh, historically industrial that's transitioning over time to residential. And also they gave uh, staff a uh, directive to study additional housing, which is what we're uh, doing with this study. Uh, so this is the current boundary. The, uh, the boundary of the plan is, is shown in that, that blue line. And generally it's at Lawrence Expressway and the, uh, the Caltrain tracks. Uh, the north boundary is Kiefer Road, the south is Reed. 
uh, east is Uranium Drive, and the west is uh, close to uh, Commercial Street on Kiefer. Uh, so a couple years ago, we, we brought a preferred alternative, uh, some options for the preferred alternative to the council. Um, we're, uh, we're all go through that um, again. And then also uh, at the time we were working with Intuitive Surgical, a robotic surgery company uh, to look at uh, potentially expanding the boundary of the LSAP to include three of their parcels. Uh, so we went through the, uh, the council uh, uh, with a general plan and initiation uh, where uh, the council at the time uh, voted to um, allow them to be part of the, the study scope. And uh, with that, the council had also brought up um, a new uh, pedestrian and bicycle route from either end of the plan to the station, and also to look at maximizing uh, trees at open space on one of the intuitive surgical properties. Uh, so this is a map of the three parcels that are proposed in the boundary expansion. Uh, altogether, it's about 32 acres. Um, and Intuitive Surgical owns three of these parcel, all three of these parcels, and they intend to build a new uh, corporate campus in this area while utilizing the uh, existing balance we have for office and R&D. Um, so uh, this would expand the boundary closer to Commercial Street uh, with both of these parcels on, on Kiefer Road. So the, the preferred alternative uh, is a increase of about 3,600 units, uh, allowing the potential for that over time. And this would bring the total unit count with the, the current uh, balance plus the uh, increase to about 5,935 units. Uh, so with these increases, we would also be looking at other uh, possible options, which would be uh, reestablishing some of the minimum densities, uh, both north and south of the tracks. Uh, increasing the building heights north of the tracks, uh, right now is 85 feet. We'd be looking at increasing that to 100 uh, feet potentially. And also as part of uh, some new state law, uh, establishing some adaptive design standards and guidelines and looking at uh, potential uh, rezoning for uh, parcels where residential may be approved. So this is the current, uh, current plan area, uh, what's, what's allowed. So Right now, north of the tracks, we allow up to 68 units an acre, and that's with all uh, density uh, bonuses included. Uh, there's currently a minimum, and with incentives, a project can go all the way up to the maximum. And there's two areas where we don't currently allow housing. This is east of Calabasas Creek, uh, bounded by Uranium Drive, and Willow and Reed, uh, where only non-residential development is possible. And there's a uh, a couple of parcels, one recently redeveloped to townhomes, and then there's another one that can do about 16 units. And then these are the intuitive surgical parcels. They're, they're not currently in the LSAP. Um, we had a couple of uh, recent uh, approvals for larger projects. One was on uh, Kiefer Road for Graystar and the former Calstone and Peninsula Building Materials site. So as of now, we have about 1,062 units remaining in the balance. So with the proposed study, uh, we're looking at an increase uh, from 68 to 100 units an acre north of the tracks. Uh, patched in, in red is the Costco site, uh, and we'll, we'll bring this up later, but staff is uh, thinking of a retail overlay, um, and we would still be maintaining a possibility for, for residential, although we're not anticipating it. Um, but we'll, we'll ask the council for some um, of their thoughts towards the end of the presentation. And then uh, looking at uh, studying residential uh, east of Calabasas Creek up to 100 units an acre. So it's, consist it's consistently 100 units an acre, um, uh, maximum north of the tracks. And then allowing housing on the Willow and Reed uh, commercial site uh, up to 54 units an acre. And this is a lower density just because there's existing residential nearby and it'd be more compatible. And then continue to uh, not allow residential uh, sh should the intuitive parcels be included. And this brings to the, uh, the 5,935 uh, number total. Uh, we also looked at a couple of other um, alternatives and we, we brought this through when we were uh, showing the uh, preferred alternatives uh, at the time. So uh, option A would be just to look at increasing residential to 100 units an acre north of the tracks. 
and uh, continuing to, to not allow residential in these two areas. Uh, same with intuitive. So altogether, this is, would be about a 1,765 unit increase. And compared to the, the, the study, uh, the previous slide, that'd be about 1,850 less. Uh, and the other option would be just to maintain the current allowance of 68 units an acre um, in these areas north of the tracks, and then allow housing uh, just in these two areas um, at 54 units an acre. Um, east of Calabasas Creek, mainly because it's further away from the station. And this would be uh, the lower, on the lower end of the increase, about uh, 1,075 and 2,035 less than uh, the proposed study. Uh, th these are just a couple of examples of what these densities look like. Uh, the, the first two on top are pictures of the Gray Star project on Kiefer Road. Uh, that's uh, in the final stages of construction, it's about 65 units an acre. And below is a rendering of the uh, apartments at the, uh, the approved Calstone uh, project, that's 80 units an acre. And then these are a couple of other examples. Uh, this is the uh, 481 on Matilda near City Hall, that's 80 units an acre. The, the loft house is a picture on the bottom by Plaza del Sol, that's 85. And uh, we weren't. Uh, we were looking at other uh, examples in the area, and, and one recently built project was in Mountain View. This is on San Antonio Road, uh, south of California. That's that's about 100 units an acre. Uh, so, for the market study, uh, with respect to uh, you know additional housing, uh, not a surprise, but we found that there there is a high demand for multifamily housing in the area. Uh, and then compared to Peary Park in downtown, the LSAP is, is generally less competitive for, for retail. Um, although this may increase with allowing more housing in the area, there'd be more, more residents. Um, there's also uh, some retail uh, in Santa Clara that's right at the border, um, which also contributes to that. And uh, the demand is not as high for, for speculative office development um, compared to Peary Park. Uh, but there is uh, demand for existing uh, property owners in the area, uh, such as Intuitive Surgical, who are looking to expand. And, uh, and then, you know, with uh, introducing more housing to this area, we also have to balance that demand with uh, keeping some of the, the existing businesses and um, encouraging their retention here. Uh, and then with the fiscal impact analysis, uh, we found that uh, you know, with the full build out of the proposed study, it would yield uh, minor fiscal gains with uh, you know, property and sales tax to the general fund. Um, although there would be some more demand on the city services with increased population, uh, such as public safety. But um, it, it found that even if we were to increase residential in the area, uh, you know, we're, we still find that a lot of the uh, existing businesses in the area would remain uh, because the, you know, they're uh, profitable as they are, um, and also some of the uh, tenants own their, their, their properties, such as Intuitive Surgical. Okay, so for the uh, incentives, this is the, the current program. Uh, so this is the program to get from a minimum density uh, to the, the current maximum uh, bonus density. Uh, so right now we have a list of defined incentives. Uh, so with, with these certain types of improvements, you get a certain amount of density points and um, at the applicant's choice, you can move up to the, the current maximum of uh, 68 units an acre. And all these, uh, these incentives on the list achieve uh, you know, broader citywide goals, also LSAP goals, such as increased uh, open space in the area, uh, enhanced uh, uh, affordable housing and sustainability. Um, and uh, so we're looking at uh, uh, a, some revisions to some of our incentive program just to uh, accommodate the, the increase in density. So uh, we would be looking at uh, a geographic approach to uh, some of the, the areas because uh, we wanna tie these to our, our sense of place plan, which I'll, I'll talk about in just a little bit. Um, but west of Kiefer Road, uh, west, uh, west Kiefer, west of Lawrence Expressway, these are some of the, the main components that we're looking at for improvements. 
Uh, so a, a class one uh, pedestrian and bike trail, this is what um, the council had directed. So it would get it from um, the, uh, one of the added intuitive surgical parcels near commercial and, and do a new uh, shared trail to uh, Sonora Court that could uh, connect to the station. And then looking at a new landscape median on Kiefer Road, um, and as well as um, better uh, bike lanes, class two bike lanes, and then also encouraging retail. And then for Sonora Court, um, it would be to uh, look at uh, completing the loop road uh, connection. I'll, I'll talk about the loop road in a little bit, but uh, one part of it is going through the, the gray star parcel. Uh, so it would be uh, encouraging the continuation of that to Sonora Court. Um, also encouraging consolidation of some of these parcels. They're usually these are smaller parcels, about an acre uh, size. And then uh, retail as well to take advantage of uh, the uh, access to the station. And then east of Kyf east of Lawrence Expressway on Kiefer, uh, we'd be doing the other leg of the, uh, the class one bike trail to get from Uranium to um, the station. And then uh, the yellow line would be the, the loop road. And, and this is just, uh, both all of these are, are just conceptual locations. They're not the final locations where they'd be. Those, those would be determined um, upon project review. But uh, the main goal of the loop road is to connect to uh, Corvern Road and to bring traffic uh, closer to the station and, and uh, off of Kiefer Road. But in theory, you could uh, access the station from Central Expressway through uh, Corvin Drive. And then also uh, there, there's future plans for a new uh, creek trail on Calabasas Creek. So uh, incentivizing connections to that trail. Uh, Willow and Reed, uh, just having more of a, a direct path to the station. Uh, so residents south of the LSAP can have better access to the station, uh, consolidating parcels, and also looking at a better um, crossing at Willow and Reed. So, uh, we are looking at this is the, the kind of the structure of the revised incentive program. So uh, a project would start um, at um, you know the minimum density, uh, 28 units an acre south of the tracks, and we we pick that just uh, because that's that's a density that's a little bit higher than what we see for townhomes. We wanted to try and um, avoid kind of a townhome development near the station, um, or 45 units an acre uh, north of the tracks, and. Um, each project would uh, propose benefits on these different tiers. Uh, tier one are, are kind of uh, 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 less challenging um, incentives to incorporate in a project and that those would likely be a defined incentive where you get a certain amount of points for each one. And then uh, that moves you up to tier two. And these are more uh, larger scale items that a project can propose. And our thought is to um, cap off the density at tier two uh, such as at 44 units an acre uh, south of the tracks or 85 north of the tracks. And then to bridge the gap between that and then the bonus density, uh, it would be tier three, which could be uh, flexible or, or negotiated benefits. And these can vary on a case by case basis. Uh, it could include a contribution to a community benefits fund. And uh, with that, that could get a project to um, the, the bonus density. So the, the sense of place plan, this is just a, a high level view of some of the improvements uh, that we're thinking of in the area. Um, this, you know, the, this is showing the, the landscape median on Kiefer Road, it'd be on either side of uh, Lawrence Expressway. And then these green lines show the, uh, the class one bike trail that would be on either end. Uh, and there's actually a, a portion of the trail that just opened up on another intuitive surgical property that um, has, has an office building under construction. And this would lead, this leads from uh, Kiefer Road uh, out to Sonora Court, so for, for more direct access to the station. So we'd be seeing uh, a, a continuation of that on the other intuitive surgical property that um, is proposed in the expansion. And then uh, this is just showing the other end of the trail, uh, the loop road, so that it, it would go underneath uh, the Lawrence Expressway uh, overpass to form this loop on either side. And uh, there's, there's some options we have for, um, for wayfinding and, and, and identity in the area because um, you know, this, this area is right on the border of Santa Clara. We wanna um, make it known that 
that you're in Sunnyvale and, uh, you know, provide better uh, access to some of the, the main destinations with wayfinding signage. So uh, we, we are looking at a, a few options. Uh, uh, staff and, and most of the plan commission preferred uh, option A. And uh, this is, these are pylon signs that be placed at um, main entry points into the area. It could be on, on one of the new uh, landscape medians on Kiefer. Um, but the uh, option on the left has the uh, push through letters and then the one on the right has the inset letters. And um, the smaller signs are just meant for um, place at different areas for um, uh, wayfinding purposes. Um, also looking at new street light designs um, as, as recommended by the Planning Commission. Um, so we're looking at uh, three options. Um, right now staff is leaning towards option C and uh, we want to also plan for, for 5G installation. So this is just a rendering of what uh, a 5G pole could look like. Um, the the non-5G poles are, are, are slimmer in profile, uh, but we're looking for more of a modern look and maybe even that these could be applied um, in other locations in the city. But um, just wanted to get the council's um, uh, preferences on, on these as well as a sign. Um, and then just to, to summarize the, the Planning Commission's comments, we, we went through, uh, through them uh, about three months ago. Um, so overall, they're, they're supportive of a housing um, increase. Uh, you know, they, they were um, mainly focused on some of the, the sense of place items. Um, uh, number one is the, uh, the Kiefer Road diet. Um, there is some language in the plan uh, as it stands to encourage a, a road diet on Kiefer Road. Um, staff has some, um, some thoughts about that, we can um, go through more. Um, and then uh, they, they encouraged us to look at other street lighting options, which uh, we came up with. And then um, just some concern about uh, additional residents and how that might affect uh, public safety services. Um, looking at enhanced uh, bicycle lanes and crossings on the, the busier streets such as Kiefer and Reed. And then looking at maybe an architectural theme for the area. Uh, so for, for next steps, uh, we're, we're having the, the study session tonight and then um, also getting uh, using this as the outreach and getting some of the, the public's uh, feedback on this. And then in July, uh, we're looking at doing a draft release, uh, release of the draft plan and subsequent EIR. And then uh, during the comment period for the uh, release period, we've been looking at uh, going to the Planning Commission, uh, BPAC Sustainability and the Housing Commission to get some of their input. Um, and then towards the, uh, the fall time, the, uh, the final EIR uh, is expected to be available. And then we'd be bringing it to the, uh, uh, the final plan, the sense of place plan and the EIR to the planning commission and council in November, December timeframe. Um, so this, this wraps up uh, staff's uh, presentation, but uh, these are just some items we'd like to highlight for, uh, to get, just get some of the, the feedback from the council on uh, just to confirm the, the direction of uh, density that we're going in, and then uh, the system of defined and flexible incentives. Um, some thoughts on the Costco site zoning. Uh, again, we're looking at doing a, a retail overlay to preserve uh, a large scale retail on that site, but um, the question of whether we should keep the existing density or go to 100 to be consistent with others. Uh, thoughts on the road diet on Kiefer, and then the, the sign and lighting preference. So this concludes uh, our presentation. We're available for questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, do any of the council members have questions? Please raise your virtual hand. Uh, first up is council member Goldman. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Klein and uh, staff. A uh, very nice presentation. Uh, I just had a couple of comments uh, before I ask a question. One is that, uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong, so maybe that's the question. Um, my understanding is that um, the real way to get public, tran I mean, public transit, uh, particularly trains uh, used, is to have a desti destinations. So if all we have is housing, and that's not what you're proposing, but if all we had were housing, then who wants to go there? You know, Great, you can get, you have people get able to get on the train, but there's uh, the only places to go are like downtown San Francisco or downtown San Jose. And we don't want that because then they just load up. You wanna, I think you want to have, again, you're the planners, but this is my impression. You wanna have um, 
destinations kind of uh, uh, evenly scattered around along the routes. Uh, so uh, that that tells me that we probably don't want to just like get rid of all the risk um, you know, that um, eastern end. We don't want that to be all housing too. Uh, also, if we make it uh, you know, too dense, I don't know. It's you're gonna. It's just gonna be oppressive. Uh, you're just not gonna have a sense of of spaci spaciousness unless you you know build up and and, and um, do uh, you know some of those older ideas where you have a tall building but you have a lot of open space around it. Uh, so the uh, that's some of my thoughts is that uh, we want to keep uh, some place some workplaces, uh, some area zone for uh, workplace uh, so that we can have some place for people to go. Uh, and if we're gonna put up more housing, uh, there's a lot of talk all the time of uh, you know, walkability. And part of that I think is being able to walk to work. And uh, the high rise to me means, as these around here means, doesn't mean condos, means apartments, rental apartments, which means you're gonna have people able to, you know, uh, rent a place because they not tied down by a house uh, to 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 um, you know, live near work, which I think we want to encourage. The other thing is you're talking about a road diet, uh, and everyone's in favor uh, against cars, but their effect of life, uh, they aren't going away, and they're they're, they're actually growing. So we we uh, if we go too dense, you go to this hundred dwelling units per acre, how are you going to get in and out? Not everyone's going to take the train might start off, you move there because uh, the, it's close to the train and you can go to San Jose or something. But then, you know, the, your, your company moves to Pleasanton or, you know, they have layoffs and the best job you can get is out, out in, uh, you know, Fremont or something, you have to drive. So that's some of my thoughts. And the question, uh, finally, I have a question. The question is, um, am I right on this? It, you know, do you, do you disagree with any of my kind of hypotheses on this? Uh, and uh, you know, what are your thoughts about uh, the trade-off between having a place to be, to go for the train station and a place to, uh, as a destination? Thank you. Uh, uh, yes, just to, to speak to that, uh, we would be looking at uh, retaining the, the flexible mixed use zoning. So um, it wouldn't just be a residential zoning, there'd still be an opportunity for either office or, or retail construction. Um, and, uh, so, but yeah, cause we, we do want to retain the, the mixed use nature and then have places where, where people can, can work and live nearby. Um, uh, that's, that's really the, the main goal of the, of the plan. Um, so that, that option would still be, uh, re retained as part of this. Have, uh, have you looked at the traffic about getting in and out or you put in those, I uh, looked at those, uh, um, 100 dwelling units per acre, is that seven stories? That's, that's a fair bit. Um, uh, how do people get in and out, assuming not everyone's gonna take the train? Uh, do we have any numbers on that? In terms of, of traffic? Yeah, traffic. I mean, if you put in uh, a road diet out there and uh, traffic uh, is not all that great. I mean, it's not that bad yet either, but uh, 100 dwelling units per acre, I could easily imagine rush hour in the morning. It can be a real uh, nightmare trying to get out of your hundred uh, linear breaker complex. Yeah, so uh, there's there's only uh, you know certain areas where we're looking at doing the, the hundred use an acre, and, and some of the parcels uh, that may be zoned for that, we're not really anticipating that they uh, redevelop to that density uh, for various reasons. But um, uh, we we are doing a traffic study and. Um, you know, there will be a increase in traffic. Uh, however, you know, staff is not recommending uh, proceeding with a, a road diet, just because there, there would be an increase in traffic in the area. And, uh, you know, we, we, we still wanna be cognizant of, of better uh, mobility for bicycles and pedestrians. So we are looking at some improvements uh, for that. And also internal improvements with a new loop road to, um, you know, get more people off of Kiefer and then uh, be able to have more direct access to the station, as well as with uh, the new uh, bicycle entrails. Hey, yeah, well, uh, you did a really nice job and I really appreciate all the work everyone put in. And as Ryan answered some other questions I had about park space, um, I don't mind density per se. I mean, I, I uh, started uh, preschool in Manhattan of all places. So 
uh, tall buildings don't bother me, but uh, I don't care how tall you build them. You got to get in and out. We don't have New York subways. So, um, um, but uh, thank you for your answers and, and uh, thank you. good work. Thank you. And next up is Council Member Hendricks. Yeah, thank you. So I just wanted to double check if I'm remembering correctly, the Caltrain business plan anticipates additional stops at Lawrence Station with electrification. That's correct? Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, and I see this is the final plans coming to the council in December. And are we very confident with that date and we don't expect to see any slippage into the, the following year? Uh, right now, we're, we're confident. Okay, well, I hope in December we're still confident that that's what happens. I, I think it's I think it's really important for us to stay on track with the schedule that we're on. So, yes. I, if if that's not going to be December, I would hope we would let the council know right away. Um, you've asked some questions about like street lights, and yet option A, B, and C. And to be quite honest, I'm the wrong person to ask. But why wouldn't we just go with like the street light design that we have in downtown, but on pole C? I I, I don't know why we'd want to come up with a new street light design, but you guys can figure that out. Um, based on the information of what I've seen, I would not be supportive at this time of a road diet um, on Kiefer. Um, the Costco piece, having that stay as a retail overlay so that we can try and keep that, um, hopefully that's gonna stay as the retail type environment that is, I think is great. Um, you know, I think we're starting to get up there on the density numbers, but we asked you to go and you know, show us what density would be and come back. So I'm okay with the strategy of what you guys are doing and you put there, and those are the maximum densities that could go in. And then the question was about um, architectural, do we want to come up with an architectural theme? And at this point, do we have an architectural theme anywhere else in the city? No, we, no, we don't. Um, that, that was something that, that, you know, that that's good. That's good. I, then I don't think we need one here. <laughs> Um, of what goes on. And I don't know if you can throw your, did I, did I answer all your questions you were asking from the slide? You did, thank you. Okay. And then, uh, yes. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so like I said, I, I'm mo most interested on staying on schedule. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next up is Vice Mayor Smith. Yeah, thank you. I, um, I appreciate the update and I will, I think, lay out my preferences and also ask a couple questions. Um, for the wayfinding, I agree that A is nicest. I think it's bold um, and the cleanest design. I like it. For the lighting, I, I agree with lighting C or lighting B. Um, C is more forward looking with the ability to add the uh, 5G functionality. I like the hooded lights better than the, you know, exposed acorn lights. I think it's um, it's better for um, stargazers and the wildlife to have the hooded lights. So I prefer that. In terms of the retail um, and then the the road diet, um, I have some questions about that. I will say that I'm supportive of the higher densities for the housing. And the flexible benefit sounds good, but um, I, I wonder if you could just reiterate what the defined, what the difference between the flexible and defined is. Yeah, so the, the flexible, there'd be a list of, of certain items like you know, proposing a covered bus stop that can get you, you know, five density points, let's say. And then the flexible benefits, um, those are, are more like large scale items. It, it could be, you know, a contribution to a community benefits fund and it, um, or another, you know, community facility that's uh, provided to the city, and that would be, you know, negotiated, um, you know, for a certain amount of, of points uh, to get from the, the tier two density all the way to the, the max. So are you propo proposing either or, like we have either the defined or the flexible? Um, it would be a combination of both. And, uh, you know, uh, using the, the flexible benefits to, um, to get to the, the maximum and then using the more defined to get to uh, kind of about 75% of the, the max density. Yeah, I liked, I liked your, um, your chart with the tiers in it with the flexible making the gap. I think I, I like the idea of the flexibility, but um, also the, 
I like a mixed approach too. So uh, then you mentioned something kind of in passing about the retail overlay, but then maybe the option of densifying the site where the um, Costco is now. Could you speak a little bit more about that? What what um, what did you mean by making it more consistent with the other parts of the, of the plan? Yes, uh, th yes, th thanks for bringing that up. So um, right now we, we do allow a, a, a variety of different land uses on that site um, and others uh, next to it. Uh, we allow, you know, it could be retail, it could be office, it could be residential. And, and right now the, the max bonus density is 68 units an acre on the, the Costco site and others. Um, so we were wanting to ask, uh, you know, would, would the council be interested in maintaining that or, or increase it to 100 units an acre like the other parcels um, that are um, in, that, in that same area where we're looking at doing the, the increase, but still maintaining um, a retail overlay so you uh, maintain that, that size of retail. I'm... I would not be uh, opposed to increasing the density, uh, but you'd mentioned, um, yeah, so it's north it, It's north of the tracks and you had mentioned uh, maybe allowing more density there. So um, I'm- Yeah, so it'd really be just for, for consistency, um, you know, but obviously with, with an increase, it might put more pressure, you know, for redevelopment, but uh, that's why we still want to have some uh, some zoning tools with uh, the retail combining district to make sure that we still have that. But it could be, you know, maybe a mixed use uh, format if if there is a redevelopment, which we, we, we don't anticipate. Yeah, I'd be open to considering that. And then finally, um, so in terms of the road diet, um, staff said that um, they would prefer not to have one. Um, where does the current plan stand and what were the, um, if you could summarize the arguments in favor, I'd appreciate it. Yes, um, well, there, there is language in the plan right now to uh, encourage a road diet. Um, there, it's basically mentioned as this is a, this would be a good idea. Um, there's, there's no policies that really, you know, are this time. Um, but just looking at it closer, you know, we're looking at an increase of, of traffic in the area know, at a volume that's, that's beyond what's usually acceptable for, um, for having a road diet. So, um, but we understand, you know, that there, there is, uh, you know, that uh, people see this as an opportunity to, um, you know, preserve more space to basically take out a, a lane in either direction and then use that for um, uh, better uh, bicycle and pedestrian facilities. Um, but we still think we can achieve that uh, without doing the road diets, um, just with Kind of visually narrowing the the street with uh, the new landscape median, having new um, buffered bike lanes that are wider, uh, better by uh, pedestrian facilities uh, as parcels redevelop, and uh, still using the, the same right of way. Uh, there's also just the added um, um, complexity of of you know Santa Clara, uh, essentially owning half of of Kiefer Road, so just uh, having to, to to get their uh, buy off on the the road diet as well. Yeah, I'll just state that I um, actually have the option of commuting through there and um, I avoid it already because it's congested during peak times, but deserted during non-peak. Um, so I, I wouldn't necessarily rule it out, but, um, uh, but I'd like to know more about staff's concerns with it. And um, so, okay, that's, that's my, the end of my comments, thank you. Thank you very much. Next up is Councilmember Larson. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation. I really appreciate the uh, update and uh, refreshing us on, uh, on the progress and the plan. Uh, for the uh, Costco site, um, I'm open to the uh, proposal of keeping the overlay and also increasing the density. Um, I do want to be sensitive to not making it, uh, basically not chasing away Costco, because I think that's, that is an important um, uh, store that, that we have at that location. Um, but ultimately, um, and um, I think that keeping the density consistent uh, in that area is a good thing. 
Um, for the station sign, I have no preference. That's not really my strength. Um, street lighting, I, I agree with option C, but again, I, I, that's a weak preference. Um, on the, uh, I noticed that there were some examples of density projects uh, of different density numbers. And um, that made me remember a presentation I saw a number of years ago from Dan Zach, a, a planner who used to be with Redwood City. And he had um, pictures of projects of different density numbers and asked the audience to guess their density. And the guesses <laughs> were way off. You know, what, what, what appeared to be a, a, highly, a high density building was actually pretty low and what looked like low density was high. And his point was really that you can't just look at a building and say what the density number is because there's so many variables. You know, is it all studios versus all spacious three bedrooms? Is there a large um, center courtyard with a swimming pool that you can't see from the street? Was the parking able to be put underground or was it, did it have to be on like the first and second story? Is it mixed use? All those things affect the mass and appearance of a building. Um, so I, I hope that we won't make decisions on uh, density numbers uh, just based on um, those pictures because as I said, there are a lot of other variables to consider as well. But it is still helpful to have some examples to, to get a sense of the range. Um, on the road diet, the fact that we would need uh, Santa Clara's cooperation and buy-in um, to do that means that for me, even being able to do a road diet is um, kind of iffy. So I would uh, want to make sure that, that we, have, we enhance our other uh, bicycle and pedestrian amenities in the area. Um, that I think those, uh, I, I, I would be open to enhancing those if we're um, not gonna do a road diet. Um, and I agree with council member Hendricks, the schedule is very important to me um, to get this done. We've been looking at this for a long time and I'm glad that we're going through this methodically. And I, I don't want to trip it up on the, you know, the last leg of the, the process. Um, so if there are any significant uh, schedule risks, um, would appreciate uh, knowing about those. That's all, thank you. Thank you, and next up is Councilmember Fong. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, George, for the great presentation. Uh, I'll go really quick. So for higher density, I think what staff is proposing of, of having all the tools possible to get the best project, that's fine. Um, so having a combination between defined incentives and flexible incentives. I just hope that in the flexible incentives, which I didn't see in the chart, was um, looking at reduced parking uh, and how that can play a role in incentivizing more density and less people relying on having parking and, and cars uh, if they're living in those units. Um, for the Costco site zoning, the question I have, just so that you can clarify it one more time, when you say increased density to make it uh, consistent, does that mean increased density for housing units specifically and not commercial retail units? That's correct. Yes, yeah, so it would just be for the, the residential option. Okay. Um, yeah. but personally, for me, I don't think that's needed. I understand why staff would rather do it now and, and, and um, not have to visit if the council at a future date had the will to increase housing production there. But for me, I think council already made that strategic decision prior to my time on council uh, before 2018 to zone Lawrence Station for the max amount of housing and, and deprioritize mixed use. So this is the one site I think in Lawrence Station where it's it's definitely commercial. And I think it re, rezoning it to a higher level of density just incentivizes redevelopment. And I, I would not actually want to see that. I would want to see Costco stay there. So, so for me, I'm against that. Um, road diet, I agree with uh, Council Member Hendricks and Larson. I think uh, schedule is the most important. And so if a collaboration between the city of Santa Clara and us takes too long, um, I think a road diet can be implemented later, especially knowing that you are going to pursue defined incentives and flexible incentives that can address a lot of the traffic concerns now uh, that may be provided. And then we could study traffic analysis, traffic enforcement later that might warrant a road diet later. Um, and for gateway sign, I actually like a combination of A and B. Um, so having the big design of A but putting the letters vertically. I actually don't like that you have to tilt your head to read it. Um, so that would be my preference. 
And for lighting, uh, obviously option C with 5G is the best option for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next up, Councilmember Melton. Yeah, thanks, Mayor Klein. George, great presentation. And I'll start by saying I was on the um, committee uh, when I was on the planning commission, the Lawrence Station Area Plan Advisory Group. And so for me personally, this is very exciting to see this involvement and uh, coming together of um, an, a potential amendment to the area plan. Um, let, me, let me try to ask a question, George. And if I need to follow up later, I will be happy to follow up later. But sort of to achieve the additional 3,612 units, right? that sort of max achievable thing. It seems to me that we would have to achieve a combination of zoning and uh, developers achieving incentives like the tier three incentives. And so if, if we wanted to hit the 3,612 additional units, George, does that necessarily mean that the, the space between Calabasas Creek and Uranium Drive would have to be redeveloped as housing to hit that 3,612? No, it does, uh, it does uh, factor in about half of those parcels redeveloping because there are some pretty heavier industrial uses there right now that we're, you know, will probably be there for a while. Uh, so we just basically took, uh, you know, what, what could be allowed uh, at 100 units an acre on each of those parcels and then divided it in half to get to, um, mm -hmm. I, th I think overall it's about uh, about 1600 units um, total in that area. Okay, and then part two of my question, George, is to hit that additional 3,612 units, does that necessarily assume that the Costco site would be redeveloped with housing? No, we're, we're not including the Costco site in our, our, our figures. Good. I feel uh, much better already with that clarified understanding. So um, if, here- If I might add, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, hi, Trudy. Hi. Hi. I just wanted to um, also clarify that if we zone it to allow residential, we, we can't just say, oh, all of the units are used up. There's some new state laws that limit our ability to do that. So for study purposes, we did not assume that every single property would re redevelop. Um, if every single parcel did redevelop, it might actually be a higher number, which, but we're not anticipating that. So. Yeah, I'm tracking. And here's what I'll do, Trudy, is I'll send um, you an email later on just to poke around what necessarily would have to happen to achieve that additional 3,612 units. And my sensitivities are to the Costco site and then also the the block between Calabasas Creek and Uranium Drive. And I, we can take that offline. Thank you, thank you, Trudy. Um, so George, I have some thoughts about Costco. I want Costco to be Costco for a long, long time into the future. And so I would be an advocate for whatever zoning did not increase uh, or add in any way redevelopment pressure on that site. So um, I hope that's clear how I'm saying that. Okay, yes. right on. Uh, so I'll say that. Um, I have some other things written down here. I love Intuitive Surgical. They're a great Sunnyvale company and I'm glad they're here in the Lawrence Station area plan area. Uh, and I would love for um, the schedule to be hit by December. Uh, you know who else is awesome in the Lawrence Station area plan area is Graystar. Uh, and they've done a great job with their new development. And George, one of the things we were always hoping to get is that connecting property that would allow us to take the new Santa Vittoria Terrace that Graystar built and punch it through to Sonora Court. And there's like one parcel, right? Do, has that parcel come through yet? No, not yet. Um... You know, there's there's interest in that because it's it's basically just the missing link that would uh, form that end of the loop road. And so then, as you're uh, reworking the incentive plan, that would be a thing that's very highly valued, perhaps in the incentive. Very plan. yes. And that was always you know what we were planning on doing, George, when we created the area plan to begin with, is we knew that the incentive plan could be updated as conditions evolve and change. And so I love that we're doing this yes. iteration here. A couple of more thoughts. 
uh, wayfinding. I'm not an expert. I'm a fan, George, of option A. I would love to see the word Sunnyvale included with the Sunnyvale logo. Uh, street lighting, I'm a fan of option C. Road diet, uh, I say no thank you. Half of Kiefer is Santa Clara and I think we have other more productive things that can be done more quickly. Mandatory architectural theme. Uh, I think I heard the Planning Commission talk about that. I'm, I'm not a fan of that. I think individual developers in concert with our professional staff can come up with great things for individual parcels. Um, I'm excited about potentially the block, George, at Reed and Willow. And there was always a thing where somebody said that for the county to do what they need to do on Lawrence Expressway, that some of the, the sliver of the eastern edge of that block would have to go over to the county. Have you ever heard anything like that, George? And is uh, there any update yes, on that? We, we did hear that uh, initially, and there, there is, you know, uh, like an actual sliver parcel that they may have a, a good chunk of it, um, you know, dedicated as part of uh, the grade separation that the county's looking at long term. Um, so that, that's why we want to, you know, encourage some parcel consolidation just to just have more orderly development um, and then plan for that whenever it comes. Okay. And then the final question, getting back to the Costco site, is I think Costco owns the land on which the Sweet Tomato restaurant is built. And Costco yes. even had some application go to the zoning administrator, and that didn't go through for whatever reason. So do you have a sentence or two about what could potentially happen with the Sweet Tomato site, George? Um, we don't really have an update uh, right now, but uh, it, you're correct. It is owned by by Costco, um, but it you know it is in the plan area. So uh, as of now, it could be a, a combination of of anything you know, retail or residential uh, office. Um, gotcha. I got you, George. Good stuff. Thank you very much, Mayor Klein. Thank you. I'm all done. Thank you, and I'll be very short on my uh, comments and questions. Uh, first, I uh, for signage, I like option A for for lighting, option C. Uh, definitely, I you know all agree with the concepts of of road diet isn't really a requirement here, and we worry about, and we worry about additional um, additional traffic uh, schedule, as has been said previously, is critical. So making sure that this stays on track, you know, it's been a long time coming, uh, more than you know, more than 10 years since this was first proposed. As far as uh, density, you know, the higher the density, the better. I do think that remain, maintaining that Costco site is very important. What is the density for the units north of Kiefer in Santa Clara? And what's the, what's the zoning to the east of our eastern border? Yeah, so it, the north of Kiefer is the, the Santa Clara LSAP, and uh, that allows up to 100 units an acre. And then um, east of the plan area, um, past Geranium Drive, that's more of an industrial zoning. I don't know specifically offhand, but it's, it's more um, office and industrial development. Okay. And then as far as, you know, as far as um, additional items in that area, whatever we can do as far as that class one trail to me is critical, prioritizing that because that's that to me is far better than a road diet. And then as far as the vision for the rework of the median and you know, from my standpoint, how much of a sense of place that creates is a big question. You know, medians as opposed to redoing the sidewalks and what's the environment for those people that are walking and or biking uh, next to them is far more important than what the medians. What what was envisioned from a staff standpoint for for the rework of the medians? Um, just to add more green space to to Kiefer, and uh, just to kind of shorten the the visual width of it, so that might you know just make it more more pleasant to walk or bike down it. With it has kind of a, a subtle slowing effect on on some traffic, but um, mainly for you know aesthetic reasons as well. Okay, and then I'll second what what council member Larson said as far as units per acre, we have some very, very small, you know, affordable housing projects with only, you know, 200 square foot uh, units that you would never guess are, are, you know, 140 some units an acre, as opposed to 
everything being built is two and three bedrooms. So that's somewhat deceptive and that's kind of, that's really based upon how our code's set up as opposed to a more form-based code, but that's, that's a problem for, for a different time. Uh, so that's all my questions. I have a few more comments and I'll send them to staff separately. Uh, City Clerk, do we have uh, any items from the public or any comments from the public that wish to speak on this item? Yes, we have two members of the public that are, have expressed interest in speaking on this item. The first is Cliff Arger. And you'll have 90 seconds since we're almost out of time. Go ahead. Cliff Barger, uh, since December of 2014, I've worked at um, 1266 Kiefer Road. I usually commute through Lawrence Station by combination of train and riding a bicycle. Um, I often have to go to other sites throughout the Lawrence Station area, mostly on Kiefer, and I'm comfortable riding a bike, but most of my colleagues are not. So the, the current design of Kiefer, I think unequivocally um, induces more driving trips because I have colleagues who cannot, they can't even safely walk across the street right now. Um, I, I agree with uh, Mayor Klein that the class one trail is great, but the class one trail does not make it safe to cross Kiefer at the street level. And it's, it's just a fact that it, it's not safe to cross that street. Um, it's not a pleasant place to be. I can appreciate what um, council member Goldman is saying about open space, but all of the open space for the most part in Lawrence Station area is dedicated to cars right now. Um, just having fast moving cars is not, doesn't make the, the place pleasant. Um, I, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of promise in this plan. Um, I really appreciate the work that staff has done. I, I think the Lawrence Station area can really be a great part of Sunnyvale and a great part of Santa Clara County. Um, I'm really optimistic about the proposals for higher density housing, but if there are going to be more people living on Kiefer Road, I think it's it's moral and right that those people should be safe walking and biking out of their front doors. And as great as a class one trail is as a destination, it, it's not, it, it doesn't do that for, for future residents or current ones. Um, thank you. And thank Mayor you. Klein, we, we now have three speakers with their hands up. The next up is Blake Reinhardt. Go ahead. Hi, good evening, I'm Mayor Klein and council members. Uh, my name is Blake Reinhart. I'm the Vice President of Construction for Intuitive. I'm leading the new campus for the, for the company. I just wanted to say a quick thank you uh, very much for hosting the study session this evening and, and for your comments, council members about schedule. And, uh, you know, especially in these, in today's time, uh, in these times, um, both schedule and, and cost certainty are, are really critical for us to ensure that we can really make this investment uh, for the company at this important time. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, professional staff for the coordination and collaboration with Intuitive in processing our application in a timely manner. We're very excited to move forward with the project and after approvals and, uh, and break ground in January and to the continued partnership and collaboration with the city of Sunnyvale. Thank you very much and uh, wish everyone uh, well. Next up is Richard Mellinger. Hi there, I will be very brief, Richard Mellinger, speaking on my own behalf only. Uh, I wanna echo Mr. Barger's comments. Um, I believe that Lawrence Station needs a complete streets uh, treat, or that Kiefer Road will need a complete streets program uh, treatment. Whether that includes a lane diet or not, I'm not sure, but it needs to be safe for people to walk along and cross and bike on Kiefer. Um, so again, uh, hope that as the Lawrence Station area plan moves forward, that Kiefer gets a complete streets pro uh, treatment. Thank you very much. We have two speakers remaining now. Julie Wasick is next. Hi, yes, um, I live in Sunnyvale off of Reed Avenue and I think that this looks great. I just wanted to reiterate though that the apartment area over here is cramped. So hopefully whatever redesign, I missed 
the initial top of it, but hopefully that doesn't reduce parking. I'm all in favor of a bike lane there and making that safer because the three lane merge that's there now is definitely a little risky pulling out of the parking um, lot. And also I wanted to just agree with the previous commenter that the bike lane on Kiefer, I personally could bike to work, but I don't because of the missing bike lane there on Kiefer. Um, it's a little scary right now. And I agree that, you know, going forward, if we're increasing that density the bike lane um, is important for ensuring, you know, greener commute options for residents. That's all. And our final speaker is Alex Schur. Good evening, council members. My name is Alex Shore. I'm the executive director of Catalyze SV. Thank you, council member Smith, for informing me about this discussion tonight. And thank you for all the council members for your comments on how to make this site as vibrant as possible. That's a huge priority of Catalyze SV and our members. And as we get involved in projects in Sunnyvale, such as the City Line project, we will be continuing to push for the most equitable, sustainable, and vibrant projects possible. And we're really excited about the possibilities of City Line. And we appreciate all the council members' comments tonight who talked about increasing housing density and other densities on this site. Sunnyvale is a real leader in addressing our region's housing crisis. And we look forward to continuing to see you all do that. Thank you so much. And Mayor Khan, we've had one more individual raise their hand, Jennifer Rink. Good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Jennifer Rank. I'm from Shepherd Mullen, and I represent uh, PS Business Parks, who owns property in the, uh, in the LSAP area. And I'd like to just direct your attention to the letter that we submitted on the record, um, just to orient folks. Um, the loop road essentially bisects my client's property to connect up to Corvin. And we sent in a list of, of concerns and, and requests as to how we may look forward to uh, getting credit within the incentive program for the loss of, of, our, of our property and, and the fact that it would be um, bisected and would in, potentially impair our ability for future redevelopment. So. Uh, I, I know that that wasn't necessarily teed up for your consideration, but I wanted to sort of put it back on your radar so that you might be able to, to, to consider it as you deliberate tonight. And um, we look forward to partnering with the city and uh, wanna make sure that, that the, the sense of place makes sense, um, no pun intended, and, um, and that you know, we can work with the city to make sure that we can move forward with, with uh, our, our redevelopment opportunities while you know participating in the uh, the opportunities that the plan has to offer thank you so much and that was our last comment yes that was our last public speaker on this agenda item very good so with that we will adjourn the special meeting at 704 and we'll take just a two-minute break and then we'll come back uh, for our normal council meeting thank you